6.35 p.m. Public input.
any student with the national award, we would recognize them. So if you'd speak a little, I know that you were for the National High School Science Data Award or something? Uh, yeah, data science. Data science. Um, yeah, so that was uh, an AI data science function that I applied for and I got it.
this group, the accomplishments this year have been amazing. I've truly enjoyed watching the leadership role that you've taken with the other students and just the pure joy that you've had through all of these different activities that you've had. And I really, I, I want to say the hustle and bustle that they create around this role is just, it's been great. You do little fundraisers and they're standing at the door with their shirts on and big smiles on their faces and just engaging with the younger students. I loved how when you did that last fundraiser you brought in and you targeted a great level to bring a specific item. I just thought it was a great idea. Um, and I love the fact that you continued your work with Lazarus also. Thank you. Any? Did a great job. Any questions? Uh, yeah, just a, a the question. So it was 300 packed. Did the Lazarus House suggest that number? Is that just what you were able to collect and donation? Okay, you got away. That's great. And did you hear, did you ever hear from them on the impact that it had or not? Yes, we did. They sent letters. That's great. Yes. Uh, the letter that was sent in. <clears throat> ended up with it was journals, this is Cleary. The letter was super heartfelt and described the impact that those those bags had on the families that they were given to you. So it was it was a nice letter, but it was it was deep meaning and it, it, it felt really good to read as the school leader, so I appreciated that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Hood School Playground topic. Has everybody heard about this? It's the buzz of the town. I've been accused of changing the skyline in North Reading. <laughs> so it, it's been a joy to, to, to watch this take off. Um, so I'll just talk about the process that we went through, where uh, we're at now, and some next steps. So we really looked at this as a need for the school, I'll explain as to why, and then a really way to engage families. So I just, one of the missions that we have is always in family engagement, shared responsibility, that contributes to the healthy development of our students um, and the growth of our children, and way to, ways to build relationships amongst all the stakeholders. So this certainly has exemplified that in my opinion. Um, it's been great, it's, there was a lot of weekends, there was a lot of families here, there was a lot of kids here, um, and it just brought joy to everyone. So it's just been a real special moment to watch the engagement of the group. So just some, for context, we had our before on the far left. Um, it was done prior to my arrival. Um, it, it, it served its purpose, it was good. Um, there was some area around it that was not so good. There was a lot of ledge, a lot of cliffs. Um, so there was some pretty extensive excavation work done. Not ideal when you have cliffs on the playground. It was bad. It, yeah, so there, was, there was some glass in there. There was some we go out in the morning and we'd like, clean it up and it, it needed some help. So we don't have that problem anymore. Um, so as you can see in the middle, a lot of volunteers helping out. And then our final project. I know that's not a great picture, but it, it gets our turf field and our play structure in the background. So how did this partnership begin? I, I, we attend PA meetings. We go, and they simply said, what does the school need? And I said, we've done a really nice job of smart boards, technology, and all those things. The area that our students need the most is that outside play area. So it started with the structure and then kind of went out from there. Um, and the PA was right on board, ready to help. This is what our kids need. We're doing this. Great. Mr. Quinlan, I think, came to a couple PA meetings with me and we talked at length about ideas, a lot of email exchanges. So definitely a very collaborative process. And then as time goes, we, Landed right on time, as you can see in the picture on the right. I think Michael Conley got a frantic email from me um, right before school was opening. It was, it was in August. Like yeah. a parent, a parent came to the playground and sent us pictures of the broken slide. So it was time to close that up, and then we had it taken out shortly after. But it was definitely timely. Um, so, like I said, our parents' association jumped right on board. Um, this is a picture of all the students of our parents' association. They were just integral, they were super supportive. 
Uh, I will say that every one of them was just able to communicate, support, always there. Everybody had their own little area of expertise and was able to jump in. Um, Jen Burnham, the leader, um, the president of the PA, was, was able to take a really strong leadership role and coordinate downward. And yeah, I think the communications, everybody who was the treasurer on Drop of a Dime would literally be in touch with us, and we really appreciated that. The, the treasurer walked up and down Main Street with he his did. with his sponsorship flyers and kind of knocking on all the all the businesses and trying to stir up some more support for our for our playground. And and there was times when that scenario happened and somebody said, Yeah, come back. Oh, he came back. He came back again. <laughs> yeah. And then he tell us that he went back. It was so Tommy Fiorentino certainly put in a lot of steps on his um, tracker that day, yeah. just going up and down twenty eighth. So we appreciated it. Um, simultaneously to kind of this, we had started a new fun run for the hood school and we wanted to target the fundraiser. So Meg Borkowski runs our fun run, did a wonderful job. Um, and our fun run, have we done two years or three years of a fun run to raise the funds for it? So we finished our third year this year and the third year paid for the turf field portion of the playground. Uh, I think that I think the batch did it first. I, I'm not sure. I know that there's a school in Linfield where one of the parents shares family with some of them. That's where they got the idea. But I don't know if we were truly first or the batch did the year before. Yeah. Um, so we enlisted some volunteers. We started getting people out, um, and that's. So thank you, Mr. Quillen, for he was a text message away from. So when we're doing a project like this, things would happen pretty quick. And we would need somebody to communicate. So the PA communications would post something, and Matt would text some parent group, and <laughs> all sorts of people would show up with shovels and wheelbarrows and Mr. Carroll. Yeah. <laughs> he was, hey, who in your neighborhood can come tomorrow morning? Yeah, he showed up. Yep. And Many of the neighbors showed up, it was so much fun, and I would show up, I would do my best, and mostly coffee or pizza. <laughs> yep, if somebody's gonna do it, we enjoyed it. Um, so so thank you, Mr. Quinlan, for, for kind of coordinating that aspect of it. I think um, Ryan Carroll has to have a big shout out and shout out and all of this. That's him in the middle, and that's him with one of his daughters. He has Ainsley, Finley, Morgan, and Delaney, who is now in middle school, four girls here at the Hood School. Um, how would you describe him? More of like a general contract? He's the project manager. Yeah. And he, I've never, uh, the detail in every email and the amount of time he put into, like, the, my brain doesn't work that way. And so having him be the contact between the PTA, the PTO, and then the, uh, sorry, my kid's school is the PTO, it's the PTA here, it's something different anyways. Um, and then between the playground distributor, everybody, he was on top finding the dates, he, all the contractors that connected through, he, it was it was a lot of work on his part. Yeah, and, and he, he, he crushed it, so he did an amazing job, so it was super appreciated, appreciated him. Um, and just, again, many hands make light work. As you can just see through all the pictures, there's multiple events happening, there's mulch spreading events, there's actually days when parents were showing up, there was a truck, and parents were carrying all of the items out, um, and then installing them, and then all of a sudden I looked up and there was like five parents up on the top, and it was done, so it was super exciting to see. Um, there were just volunteers everywhere. Um, so we have a playground sponsor list. Um, Mr. Quinn. Oh. Everybody knows Mr. Quinlan, right? The school wellness PE teacher. Ed. So I will just mention our diamond sponsors were the J. Turner Hood Parents Association, Cavalieri Construction, and Benevento. Um, we had the Zanecki family, the House family. Um, the House Corporation, it's Scott and Nicole Buckley, thank you. And V&G Ironworks is a platinum donor. 
Yeah. For gold donors, we had China Cuisine, um, Colin and Jonah Christie students here, uh, Cummings Properties, Fit Revolution, the Fiorentino Family, Independent Concrete Pumping, Lenane Insurance Agency. Uh, kids are not here yet, but they will be soon. Um, Mike DeSasio, excavation contractor, is a, a former, former student. student. Um, PDA Dental Group. Silver, sponsor level, we have Christopher's Market, Earthstone and Water, the Fitzpatrick Family, Flush Incorporated, Franklin and Lola Chang, students here, Hood School, 2024 fifth graders, uh, JJ James, Juliana and Joey Burnham, the Keene Family, Kitties, the Ludwig Family, Main Street Barbershop, Michael and Nathan Arena, the Milovanova Family, the Moran Family, Nick's Place, Reading Lumber, the Roden family, and Salem Five. And we appreciated all their donations, all their support. It was, it, like I said, it was just for being the, the principal of the school, just to see so many people step up and help in any way they could was just it, great to step back and take a look at the joy. So thank you to all of those sponsors. Um, the Cavalieri family, we just want to talk a little bit about how that happened. So the parents, it's Jimmy, James, and Diana. They have a baby, Charlotte, who, and then there's Cameron and Chase, who are both students here. That's them up there on top of the play structure. So we all have favorite moments in time during events. So, so this is Chase. He is operating the, he's compacting the sand. That was fun to watch him grab that his father was not happy with him at that moment, but I was able to snap a picture of him doing some of the excavation work, so that's great. Yeah, the Cavalieri family was just amazing to, it was amazing to see somebody work with such passion. Um, Jimmy claimed that he got hooked early on, um, he got in deep, and started just always talking about doing it for the kids and doing it for the kids. I mean, he was here on Sunday mornings. Um, he was here for like at least five weekends in a row, it's like straight, yeah. not total. There was a time that I was going to see my nephews at Linfield to play a lacrosse tournament against North Reading. I came here, I left to go see that. And he stayed, and his son was actually playing the game. So like the level of dedication that even that moment in time, he was all in, always talking about the kids, how to help the school. So I just really appreciated that. They're just an amazing family. So we, we have them for a lot more time around, around the school, so we're super happy. And I mentioned Benevento, they have Benevento companies there because Mr. Cavalieri was able to connect us with them for their donation as well, and they just, we needed material, it was here like within an hour. So just amazing family and amazing company to work with and super appreciative of them. But I, I, I just loved his passion and his level of dedication around this product project. I think one of the things you pointed out was all the legend cliffs that were there when they built the other playground. It, it just the resource they had at the time allowed them to do the playground area and that was it. He was able, that's all we were thinking we were going to be able to do and all of a sudden the entire landscape was was reconfigured. We gained more space to move about I don't know how many car sized pieces of ledge around so yeah. um, so just some pictures going through what the playground on the so we had a soft opening it's still in the soft opening phase. There's a big announcement at the end of this presentation about our next steps. But um, there's a big debate in the Carroll family, so this is two of the girls right here. Which one was the first one to go on the slide? So Morgan told me today that it was Ainsley who was the first one, but then I asked Ainsley if she was the first one to use the slide, and she said no, it was Morgan. So I guess we'll never know who the first one to use the play structure was, but definitely good to snap that picture and see their smiling faces. Um, Dana Lewis at the middle school was able to put together a little video of our students using it. Everything is um, fun for them to explore and adventure. And 
and really push the limits of what their motor skills are.
So <laughs> our project manager was asked to consult on that, to be honest with you, but I don't know where he left that. Um, he did mention that he was asked to be a consultant. Um, so I'm not sure where he is at with that. But, you know, we lend a hand, but I, I think we're still, we still have some steps out here. I mean, there's, there's definitely some next steps for us. Um, a swing set was delivered last week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that has to get put in still. Um, we're still talking about some. some Re rebuilding the patio. Yeah. We took the patio out. We saved all the sponsor bricks from the past to put in the walkway, but we still have a lot of papers left. So we're talking about picnic tables that match the school colors and, and all that fun stuff on a new patio. Um, there's a couple other elements that, you know, depending on what the future brings. So our, so our next big step, though, will be the in installation of the swings and then kind of trying to figure out where everything else lands. Um, I, I would just, I, would just I, I think many thanks to the community, but also many thanks to the extra hours put in by you two and whoever else was involved here and the staff. It's a, it's a huge project, and, and to get it done so quickly and so well is pretty amazing. It was fun. We did, we, we did well, and, but we enjoy, well, I think we really enjoyed it. I mean, yeah. it was like good times to see people. It's just nice to see such dedication. I mean, I, I, I caught it a little bit. I would just come here and be like, oh my goodness, like, all these people are here like, doing all these amazing things. Like, literally, big wheelbarrows of mulch coming. Like four hour shifts. It was, it was, it was good. <laughs> we asked for something to see the next day. Just want to echo what Mr. McGowan said to, to thank everyone, uh, Carol's, Cavaliers, everyone that helped out. Uh, but, but really, I mean, Dr. McKay, your leadership on this, like we've been walking this grounds for many years when we come to visit. He's had ideas about we can build something here, we can build something here. I don't think um, it all came together and we then started to see the vision. You've been so excited about this project. Yeah. Uh, every time I come to this building, um, you give me these and, and, and updates on what's happening. So really, thank you for guiding this uh, all the way through. So thank you. I, I'm, I'm just so happy too with the Principal Panels Association. Like they just, there's just so many of them, but they have clearly defined roles and they were able to execute. Like I said, like we needed money. Mr. Fiorentino was there. Mrs. Byrne was there for her advice. They were PA both, it's like in short notice. Like, it, it, like I said, everybody, it's, you can go on and on and on. We hope to do that at the, at the, the grand opening ribbon cutting, just to recognize everybody's the full detail at which they deserve to be recognized. Any other questions? Uh, so it is right out that door. If you want to take a peek, or I know I said no earlier, but I'm looking outside and it's nice if you want to, or if you want to just move on to the next item. You can always see it when you leave. Do you have anything else? For so we do. We have. Right, we close the presentation and then Barb's going to break for like two minutes. Maybe we can look at the very end before we go over the budget. All right, so you are going to be serenaded by the Hood School Chorus, led by Miss Jana Kamal. Um, this is one of her favorite things to come every year and kind of showcase something. She sends it out to the students. So she roughly has 52 students participating in the chorus. Um, and then how many do we, so we have 52 in chorus. This is Miss Kamal. Yes, we have approximately 20. 22 yet? Uh, 20%. Oh, 20%. <laughs> um, but this is, you know, just a preview for the spring show that you'll all be at on June 4th, because that's a big show. It's a big and good.
So it is pretty fun to watch on the big show. We can't wait. So yeah. when is the show? Uh, June 4th. Spring concert and arts night combined. So big, big night for coming to see all of the kids' art and to hear the performance. And, and we just announced before we came in, it's also right before that is the ribbon cutting. Right, I saw. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. So, so big so fun night here. It's going to be a busy night. So. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you. Very well done, friends. You. you did an amazing job. Thank, thank you for showcasing you. that. And always a pleasure. Great job, everyone. Good job. Thank you. So that brings the Hood School Showcase Night to a close. Unless there's any other questions, I just want to say thank you to all the families and students for coming out. And thank you for coming to the Hood School. Uh, on the journey and you know I just I really love showcasing everything that we're doing here at the school and I'm just so happy to be with us today. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So Thanks. We'll, we'll take a quick break. We don't have to use the new but we'll uh play around with the video and let's take the budget. Let's take the budget. Very exciting. So, okay, thank you everybody. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
So let's go on to the budget first, and then we'll go back to the policy and see if it's a good choice. So. Are we going to close the door? Or are, we gonna... I know. are you guys cold? <laughs> what is happening here? I'm getting both. We can leave it open if you guys are sweating. So. I think people are just saying it's kind of hot in here. So. Okay, all right. I'll, 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 I'll put them in. Tear it down. It's fine. Sorry. Can you close it down? I'm so excited. Okay. No, cold. Yeah. That's <laughs> cold. Okay, school budget vote. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Connolly to walk through. We have to have, do we have, we have people online? I don't know if I can be doing that. We do. We have new uh, people or people that have already heard this before? Uh, we should, like, yeah, sorry, Jeff. Move everybody close. <laughs> move it. Uh, yeah. yeah. If it didn't say people, like, you could probably do kind of an expedited. Yes, summary, and then get to like the what we talked about at the you know, workshop. Yeah, right. So we uh, have made we had a budget workshop on Friday, and we have some changes uh, based on feedback and the discussion that occurred at the budget workshop on uh, Friday before the school uh, a Friday notification week last just this past Friday. Um, so I'm just going to kind of walk through those changes, and highlight where we're at. Just do a quick summary on what's sort of on the, the table for discussion and hopefully a vote, uh, looking to make a vote this evening. Um, so really quick, there's three, three, I'm sorry, there's two school budget proposals that we have um, under consideration this evening. Uh, we had previously been discussing three. Um, we kind of had revised that, uh, um, those budgets down to two. So the first is the budget that we all know. It's sort of the balanced budget proposal, sort of a non-override budget um, uh, situation here in, in North Reading. It's a, it's a budget that's 3.9% higher than fiscal year 24. Um, it's a little more than $38.7 million. And that is a budget that, as we discussed, and we're going to quickly highlight them again, some would require some reductions over current local services. And the level of current positions is about 15.2 FTE positions in, in the school school department. Um, the latest version of our sort of recommended budget proposal is a budget that is is, is 40 million That budget is 7.7 percent um, higher than fiscal year 2024. It's slightly less than the budget that was presented at the public hearing, and then again at, on Wednesday night during the, um, the, the forum, um, the, the, the three board meeting. And the one change to that that's highlighted is that we're still going forward with four additional four positions. 2.4 of those are driven by enrollment changes at the elementary level based on class sizes and increases um, in the primary grades. Um, 1.6 of those is, is new positions driven by our strategic plan. As a reminder, the 0.6 school adjustment council and our 1.0 academic interventionist. Uh, the one change, and this came out of conversation on Friday, was the, the need uh, or the desire to not go completely free um, free full day kindergarten for next year. So we had been phasing free full day kindergarten in over a number of years, going back to fiscal year 2021, from the original tuition of 4,250. Uh, and currently, that tuition currently this fiscal year sits at 2,500. So we have decided to sort of phase that in over the next few years, as opposed to going from 2,500 down to a tuition zero effective next next fall in September. Um, so this proposal would bring that tuition from $2,500 to $1,500. Um, still a reduction. Um, in, what that does is it, it does result in some additional revenue being available on that uh, for the kindergarten account that we can hold to draw from next year. Less funding being necessary to draw from the reserve of funding that's built up over a number of years. So um, that's why we, you're seeing a sort of a reduction to um, what our recommended budget proposal is this evening. Mr. Connelly? Yeah. Real quick. So Mr. McGowan and I both went to Thing in the library this weekend. Thankfully, nobody else showed up because then we've been in an issue. But um, 
one question that came up was, and I guessed on the number, so I want to ask the actual number from you. What's the total number of FTEs we have right now? Somebody was asking, like, what's our total number for this year? What would the FTE be in the balance budget? What would the FTE be in the correct and revised charge sure. that we're asking for? Um, I thought so it was like we were around 286 or something, but I don't know if that's the right number. I'm going to move over the posters. Yeah, whatever the total has to be. So it's more than that. So we, we, um, so we, were, at 300, we were at 378 currently. 378? 378, including food service, 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 food I, I know it's not 286 or 286, so that would be the comparison. Yeah, so that includes everything, 378.8. And then, again, we are only, the revised recommended budget seating group is four additional, four additional FTEs. So I think it's important that we sort of clarify that, because I think the original preliminary budget that was sort of sent out, presented, information went out to the community, was, did include the <coughs> Eight additional positions, and two point four, and then five point six two. But we have we have modified that down to four and four. So we have three eighty two point eight then, and then the balance one it doesn't cut fifteen. We have a couple. The two point four is two point four are levels are our addition for level services, correct? So there is an F, well, it's an FTE reduction on what our new request is, but. Yeah, correct. So it's so it's fifteen point so it'd be fifteen point two less than the three eighty two point eight or less than the thirty three seventy eight point eight. Um it would be so we have identified I think it's three from the three seventy eight point eight. No, thank you. Is it is it off of the three seventy eight point eight? But I think a couple of those are additional level services so wouldn't really be going down like what do you got? That was the question. I think it's good. I think it's good just to know this. Like, if you have a question, so. yeah. Okay. So I'm trying to know what the total level would be of that team. It's a little. You'd have to get that number exact because there may be some attrition that we're not. Yeah. Right. When we're talking 1542, those are positions in the title. Yeah. So if we've already factored in the savings to attrition, I'm not going to find it. So right. within within one or two, though, okay. it's, it's yeah. It's a little tricky to get the attrition. Yeah. It's a bit, but all markers. Because the because fifty point two included, I think two point four new for level services. Correct. So yeah. Really so we're reducing from level services. Correct. So we're, so it's really like twelve position or like twelve the first versus addition yeah. versus fifteen point eight versus this year. Correct. Okay. So that's it. That's fair. Yeah. Correct. So you're right. Yeah. That, that that's what I, that's what the question was. Okay. And I just want to make sure we were clear on this. Okay. Um, and if I call the budget too, so I figured we're we're happy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, so this is really what's under uh, what we want to present as an update this evening and ask for support. Um, so these are the two budgets that are under consideration. Really quickly, we presented these at a number of times. I don't know if we a couple of minor changes um, to what what we've talked about over the, over the last couple of weeks. So these would be the reductions, again, to, re to get to that balanced budget um, scenario that column one on the previous slide, which would be the 3.9% increase over fiscal year 2024. Um, so again, it would be, it would be you know, three um, elementary classroom teachers, impact on certainly class sizes, and particularly in the primary grade level. Um, what we have done in this scenario is we, the only really changes here is we, we remove the uh, removal of the two school adjustment counselors and we would look to increase um, six uh, uh, academic you know, educators, both regular and special ed at the secondary level um, as opposed to two school adjustment counselors the next fiscal year. Um, so that would just have a great impact on teacher-student caseloads, certainly class sizes, overall breadth, the depth of the curriculum at the high school level, at the middle school level. Um, but that change does allow us to at least restore those two school adjustment counselors at least for one more year. Um, 
and again, there's no guarantee what would happen in the future, but that, that is a change that we felt um, we wanted to make it to because on Friday we discussed we discussed that. So that, that's one change. Everything else is sort of similar, but the, the school the nursing position, 0.5 reduction of the, of the nursing position, technology, um, support staff, 0.5 reduction, academic support tutors, 1.2 reduction, that's the, the tutoring support um, at the elementary level, um, custodial cleaning staff, a reduction, athletic coaching staff, there would be a reduction, um, general classroom kindergarten, kindergarten support, and um, there would be a reduction um, to get to that balanced budget. And then the other item that changed here from what was presented at the public hearing was we also removed the school, the late reduction of the weight bus at the middle school mainly. Um, we've taken that $15,000 we replace that with additional constitute school and district expense budgets. That number increased uh, by $5,000. And then we also took a little more risk and added an additional $10,000 to a food service account offset to um, increase the indirect cost offset for utilities and cleaning services on the food service revolving account. So there's a little bit more of sort of inherent risk in that, in those adjustments. Uh, but it did, that is what allowed their, uh, the $15,000 reduction that we previously listed for the late bus at the middle school. Um, all the areas are the same that was previously presented. There was conversation about where we would look to increase the user fees as we were trying to find $40,000 of additional offset of user fee um, and what that would look like. We certainly would have options, but I think the most recommended option would be to focus that on the busing, the bus fee um, for next year. Uh, that's where we're seeing the largest increase to the operational budget, the fixed cost increase because of the, the increase in the rates um, due to several dynamics going on in that market with fuel escalation of costs, shortage of qualified bus drivers, a variety of things is just causing those rates to go up. We're still below the market. Um, it's advantageous for us to renew and exercise that option year that's in that existing contract. Um, but we're still seeing the 9% spike in those, those costs. So um, trying to increase that user fee that we don't want to ever kind of look, look to do that is, is somewhat prudent to help us reduce that, that cost and that impact on the operational budget. So us to kind of cap, safely capture $40,000 we would be looking at an individual um, cost of about $500 per bus pass and family pass of $800, which is currently at $425 per bus pass and a family pass of $700. We could, we could discuss the bus fee that will entertain, but just my first question would be, when we have that discussion, just like to make sure we are not charging people more than the actual cost per student. So, there's some that we have to bus for free. Yeah, we're well below that. Yeah, just, just, yeah, just want to make sure that the, the actual cost for a, for a rider is less yeah, than that. Yeah, we would be in the thousands. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're capturing 35, 40%. Okay. Where the cost, if we were to, the optional program right. that we really need about six buses for, yeah. we'd be on $1,200 per bus for us. Okay. I'm not close to it. Okay. 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 That's important to know for me. Yeah. When we're talking about these fees too, but it's still, an optional program that still be some you know, right subsidized right. by the yeah. by the budget. So. Yeah, that's a good question. And I think, I think over time, as those costs have risen, we've kept the bus fee as, as low as possible and haven't had increases for a number of years. Um, we've kind of more of those costs over time has really shifted. Um, so we haven't really been at that 50-50 split um, for seven you know seven seven eight years. Um, this, this is, I brought this up before, and I remember you um, had a good response for it, and I'm just revisiting it because of the situation we're in. Um, it, has there ever been any consideration, I know this could be used to defray bus costs because it's different buckets, but for parking eight? Um, for it has. It's, um, so we did uh, look at that a number of years ago, I want to say around 2017, 18. Um, we had some, again, we're trying to close the budget gap, and 
there was a lot of conversation around that. It was it was rejected at that time for consideration. Uh, it wasn't going to bring in a significant amount of revenue. We looked at three hundred dollars, one hundred twenty-five, one hundred fifty dollars to park and fee at the high school. It's going to generate in the area of around twenty-five or thirty thousand. Um, it had it, again, it has to then offset sort of maintenance costs of um, the parking lot, striping, upkeep, and snow removal. So you would certainly be able to identify those costs to get to that additional revenue source. Um, it, at the time, um, it was more of that time, but it has been considered in the past. Just, uh, we, as we
reason that it's more than that is because we have some new growth still from market planning. Next year, FY26, I think, is the last year there's going to be any of that. And we are you get there are expenses that are frankly higher than two and a half percent already. And so this is using some free cash from years past. And so just understand that like this is 50.2 is a is a is more than prop two and a half actually supports. And if we do not have an override, we're not talking about if we don't get an override in this 15 position. If we don't get an override in the next three years, we're losing 40 or 50 positions. Because there's going to be similar size cuts each of the next two years. Because the gap between revenue and, and expenses does not go down next yeah. year. And the revenue we'll actually have will be less. Because some of the free cash will not be generated. And so just so people don't, can appreciate, like, the override, when we say $10 million over the next three years, you know, three million, three and a half million each year, we're talking about, if, if nothing happened in the next three years, we're talking about, again, I won't go on the numbers you talk about, probably 50 positions is what we're talking about. And so it's not just 15 and that everything is, you know, hunky dory next year. This is fixing this year and then we still have the same gap or even a worse gap the next two years. It's not a one-year problem. No. We can't have a one-year solution. We've worked at it for many, many years as a team to sort of make it not as public. Right? We find a way to get through it every year. And we've been talking about this um, for several years. Through the ESSER funds, as we talk about them, and talk about the leaving, we've been paving that way and laying that framework for several years. But this is the year we're really going to head and put it to the public to, to weigh in on the importance of, you know, these are the things that we want to see preserved in our district, then we need to, uh, to support that, that vote. Yeah. And I very much appreciate the few people on the call that are paying attention. And you know, some people are calling community meetings, but two people showed up at the community meeting that are not on board right now. Two. And I don't think people understand what this is. And this is one year, and then next year it's even worse. Yeah. That's a good one. It's just, I guess, just and we always, uh, the administration's goal in, in developing this, it's never easy in Dr. McKay's year. We were on a call this morning going again, going over the list and um, reviewing it and trusting with these very difficult decisions. And, um, we always try to find a way to make it be sort of the least harmful list. And this, everything on here is going to hurt and impact our services. And unfortunately, the, the problem will not go away. It's, it's, to, you know, just said. We're talking about level services now. Next, next couple of years, we're talking about services overall. We're talking about programs. We're talking about not just fewer people or smaller or bigger class sizes. We're talking about programs going away. And yeah. which in the long run might end up costing more. Yeah, that's what we said. Yeah.
so the, the state budget is still kind of in flux. It still remains somewhat fluid. Um, it's it's in the it's on its way to the Senate Ways and Means Committee. The, the governor released its budget. The House came back and actually funded an increase to Chapter 70 State A, the Education State A through the Chapter 70 program. Uh, he actually increased the base level minimum spending amount per pupil that all districts receive, including more credit, um, from what was set by the governor at $30 to potentially as high as $104. Um, so now that goes on to the Senate Ways and Needs Committee. We don't really know what could happen. Um, it has to kind of work its way through that process. It could be as mid-June to the end of June before it's finalized. But if that were to be finalized, it could free up some additional revenue. Um, so and we're, so we have $30 right now, it's $30. Correct. Correct. So just to be clear, the $30 would be a sort of a standard level increase in Chapter 70. Correct. $30 per student.
presentation is that we at least have that stability over the next few years and be able to move through uh, that without having to go through this year after year after year. A lot of districts that have had to go through that process year after year after year, it takes looking at people and then hiring them back. There's a lot of turnover in those districts and it, it changes the character of the district very quickly. Um, that's not a place I want to be, which is why I think bringing this to the, to the voters is the best way to do this. Because I don't think that's a place anyone wants to do. It's not the school system anyone wants. Basically, you're carrying down structures and having to rebuild. Yes. Um, so the final slide just sort of represents sort of a summary of what's kind of um, on the table that can be concluded from um, the process at this point. So we're really looking at two budget scenarios, one of which reflects the, the first column, which is really a, a non-override budget or would be a balanced budget within the available revenues of the town. That is that 3.9% budget that higher than fiscal year 2024. And what does that budget do? It, it's a budget that does meet the contractual salary and operational expense obligations that we do have, the fixed cost increases, utilities, um, maintenance increases, busing increases, um, other our obligations that we obviously are required to do. Um, it does eliminate from level services, I will say 15.2 FTE positions, those that we identified and just kind of spoke to. Um, we've talked about some of these bulleted uh, impacts of, of that. Certainly higher class sizes, higher teacher, student teacher caseloads at all levels, less of breadth and depth of curriculum options at the secondary level, reduced ability to address student, student health issues and nursing coverage, less digital learning technology staff for instruction and tech support, um, less than the ability to address students um, that need academic support in those early intervention strategies, especially in math and ELA at the elementary level would be impacted. There would be less funding for classroom supplies and technology, less custodial staff for cleaning services and coverage needs, higher coach to student athlete ratios, um, and then just, I think, overall higher risk for budget overages and increased reliance on them special revenue accounts, um, which could put future, convert on future um, revenue accounts in future budget years. And then the potential, obviously, as we talked about, increased user fees to families, particularly potentially in the busing program. Um, the, what we were calling the revised recommended budget, or what would be a budget that would be supported by a proposition to half override vote, Again, is a budget that meets our contractual salary and operational expense obligations. It's a budget that would not include in any reduction to our current staffing levels. Um, it would not include any reduction to level services. Um, it's a budget that maintains level services, including our current class size um, guidelines and objectives and goals, uh, particularly in the primary honor grades and grades in kindergarten through grade two. Um, it rejects student and teacher caseloads at all levels in terms of what are optimal for student achievement and student learning. It maintains our current nursing services, technology support, um, structure and systems, our custodial staffing levels. It does not reduce any extracurricular activity programs, particularly athletic program our reductions do not occur. It maintains and enhances our ability for the district to address mental health concerns and issues for students at all levels. So this is really that 0 0.6 school adjustment counselor. Very modest increase, but it does allow us to really meet some objectives and move those initiatives that have been in our strategic plan for a number of years forward. Um, it maintains and enhances our ability for the district to address student needs for academic support in math and ELA. Not losing those academic support tutors at each elementary level is uh, essential in allowing us to um, address the needs of students and be more proactive um, and provide those early intervention strategies and enhancing that with a professional position. That's really not where we want to be. We want to be on that added more support, but that one professional position would enhance that, that, that structure. Um, and then it doesn't like, achieve free full day kindergarten next year. This is the revision from the public hearing presentation. But it does include a plan to continue to reduce that tuition, uh, which is what we've been doing now for a number of years since fiscal year 2021, 
um, and we would go from a to 20. This proposal that was presented would go from a tuition of 2,500 to 1,500. So we would continue that phasing plan to move eventually to free full day kindergarten into the future. One, one question. Um, like the, the total FTE count, does that count substitutes? No. So that's just something I want to point out. When we talk about relationships, uh, when we talk about um, telling someone that they, they're out of a job, if, if I'm out on a year-long leave and Michael fills in for me for the year, I form relationships with the community, with the school, with the, you know, with the students, with certain families. And if we're adding a classroom next year, I come back and we're both in, right? We're still telling, in, in this scenario, we're telling like, so even though it's maybe a new position, because I'm coming back, the FTE change, so that, that's where it gets really gray in some of these conversations that we're trying to communicate. So when, when, when I say we're having conversations with people in 15, 22 positions, and maybe one or two that are retirement for things, but then there's those other gray areas with substitutes who are, of course, excellent. Some of these uh, long-term stuff we have are phenomenal, and we want to find a place for them because there's a lot of promise and we want to, we want to grow with them. And when we grow with us, those cuts um, are very impactful. So I want to find that might not show up in a clear mathematical equation of FTE and numbers. It's, it's, it's we're not hiding anything, it's just it's, it's a cumbersome uh, process. Yeah, it just reminds you the ability to build the organization that you want to with the people that you've already discovered, are good people that you just can't keep them because they're only here as a long process. And you might not show up in a quick calculus. Or, There's no way to do what we can. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll be wanting to put more money in. I hope people get behind it. I hope parents come out and say we don't want this, not just this year, but in future years. I hope the unions get behind it because I haven't heard anything. I've actually heard from people that are in union in North Reading saying, well, we don't need this. And so it is disheartening. So I hope people wake up and realize the impact before they position for a year or two years and then people realize, oh wait, they aren't going the way they used to. So. And, and I would just add, I would just say that I think I appreciate the, the willingness and you know, final decisions have been made, but the willingness of the other boards to consider this, the uh, uh, finance committee and the select board and the subject capital Building committee. Uh, you know, that's a hard thing to even talk about, and they're, and they're talking about it seriously, and I think it will come forward to the town, so I, think that's really I appreciate that. all that. These, these cuts do touch every year, from custodial to uh, digital learning, technology, paraprofessionals, teaching positions, um, educated positions. So, before we take the vote, I just want to, I, I know there's people that took the time to listen in tonight. If you don't have any comments, please feel free to raise your hand and talk to Bailey Paul. If any committee members have any other comments, questions? When we, uh, when we present this at a, at a town meeting, are we presenting a presentation or is it just a one item for the And, and we are ahead of the select board in terms of that part. Like they have more work to do, I think, on exactly identifying their cuts. And I that. think, if, for instance, a slide like that, they, they, they just don't quite have that yet. They're not right at the point where they can say, here's what it looks like here, here's what it looks like here. But they're, they're getting there. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, our, and, our hope is that we get a lot of turnout of their information sessions and the messages out there and we can be succinct. But, um, I think I agree. A slide, this to me is the one of the key slides, and we're going to get out of the information presentations as well. Here's what you're getting, here's what you're losing, and here's what you're getting. And then, and, and, and so focused on the dire nature of this, I do want to take a moment to thank Mr. Connolly and Dr. Daly. It's always, we always thank Mr. Connolly for the budget part, and you do an excellent job on putting this together and identifying where to go. But I think Dr. Daly this year, even more so because 
when we're identifying cuts and trying to figure out where we can do that without that at least impact on students really more as well. So I appreciate both of you doing this very hard exercise. And so okay. Michael said we come together often, we came together this morning. Yep. The conversations are not easy. You know, but everyone realizes what can I get for the greater good, you know, and, and uh, where is it rolling down, where can we get it's it's a challenging conversation. And these are none of these cuts are we can live with. These are all going to be yep. very impactful. So I'll entertain a motion. The only suggestion I have on the motion is I don't think it should require an override of. It makes it sound like that's the override. It's a second budget of blind button, which would be required override. Yep. Something like that. Do you make a motion for us? So oh, yeah. So I actually prepared one. I don't yeah, know. That's what we're, yeah, I'm modifying that slightly yeah, just because it, it, says, work. it says an override of 40 million. Yeah. We're not asking for that. That makes yet. sense. Yeah. I move that the school committee approve and hereby adopt the following fiscal year 25 school operating budgets to both be considered at the annual town meeting on June 10th. First, a balanced non override budget of 38,772,128 which represents an increase of 3.9% or 1.1,452,533 or over fiscal year 24. And second, a budget of $40,208,446, which represents an increase of 7.7% .7 or 2,888,851 over fiscal year 24, which budget would require an override vote by the town. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Any further discussion? Yes. Um, and the, the only the only question is if, if how we're presenting it, but I think it's a good motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Passes by zero unanimous. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Do I do policies or school of choice? School choice first. School choice vote. Okay. Open up public hearing. Public hearing. I open the public hearing on school choice vote for fiscal year 25. Dr. Daly, want to lead the discussion? Sure. We um, shared your package of some information um, to consider. There is the um, documentation here that I'm not sure if you had a chance to review. Just. We always get the question about which districts are currently participating in school choice. Um, My only question on that was, here. whenever it said yes, but it said you need to ask the district, is it a yes or we don't know? A lot of those said you need, we, we don't really have information, you have to ask the district, and yeah, it said yes. In the been late in turning in there. But does the, yeah, does the yes mean yes, or does it mean we don't know? I think, they, I, I think the way the law is written is we assume yes if they don't complete it by June 1st. So, like, those so it could, could still be no. Those okay. could be no. So. Okay. But I think you can see the characteristics of a lot of the districts, smaller rural districts are, are in, in certain parts of the state are more open. I think when you look at our area, there's a lot. You know, Michael, I never went to this one in the packet. It was in the, I don't know if you saw this document in the, um, does everyone have this? I can just pass it out. But that, um, I can link it in there. Um, it's in the, uh, the folder. But this is just our annual presentation, just some highlights about it, just showing some comparison districts and that there's a video. Um, I'll give you. Actually, one question that relates to the budget and this yeah. to an extent, but what's the average cost to educate a student in? Massachusetts and what's the average cost for North Friday? I know we used to be below the average for people. For yeah, people. I was just thinking of that. So the most recent FY23 data that just I just got publicized by the Desi not not too long ago. The state average cost, and this is total all funds, in the district, out district, all 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 funding funding approach, state average is twenty one thousand one hundred and sixteen dollars per people. North Reading is currently slightly below that average um, at 20852 Okay, perfect. And that's for, that's that represents what, what year? Last fiscal year's expenditures, which is the most recent data that we have. Yeah. A lot of the press says it's like, okay, thank you. Ago. 
So okay. we, we typically have a motion that uh, states to not participate in school choice because the program as it presently uh, constructed ensures uh, that the needs of some children with the Commonwealth are not being met. And the administration recommends not becoming school choice at this time. Okay, Any discussion? All right, any questions? I don't think anything has changed since last year. Thank you. No, especially if you do it in our circumstances. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then we'd like to make that motion. Someone else could read it because it's too small for me. <laughs> I don't have any computer glasses. <laughs> you have it up? Yeah. I have it up, I can't. I have the same yeah, problem. I don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> We're old. And I forgot my glasses, which is because I'm old. Where is it? Where's the motion? It's in the second paragraph of the Thank you, Diana. Yep, I do not participate in school choice because the program as it is presently constructed ensures that the needs of some children in the Commonwealth could not be met. Second? A motion for a second. Any discussion? In favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you very much. We go back to Policies. A second reading of policies. What? Oh yeah, we have to close the public meeting. Do I need a vote? I move I need a vote. Let's just do a vote. Okay, about vote. I move that we close them for our school choice. Yeah, the school choice meeting. Second. Motion second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Do we roll call vote? Okay, on to policies, back to policies. Mr. Friedman, you want to do policies? Want to? <laughs> uh, sure. I think, again, I think, just, yeah. I mean, it, it, we're, we're some of the, it looked like some of the changes we talked about were made, so if you want to just on each of them, Make a motion. We have one, the second. Any discussion, and then we'll yeah. then we'll have a vote. Yeah, I, I, I believe I updated all the changes, the capitalizations. If there's something that's not there, just to point yeah. out. Obviously, yeah. capitalizations and things like that can be done. These are about yes. again taken verbatim from the NAC yeah. docs that are shared. I did go ahead and make some of the changes that were discussed. It was voted down, so we can talk about it. I, uh, on, on one of the policies, just in terms of that, the DJ, you know, that's the one that we discussed about the superintendent or designee. Yeah. I, I, on reviewing the video as I was doing it, I'm thinking, what have I got to lose by, by saying it the way it was framed? So I did put it in that way. We can discuss it again. And, 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 so. so GIFBA is the first uh, under the agenda. So why don't we just sort of start at the top. Yep. Um, the first one is uh, policy DIFBA, fiscal management. Uh, so this is a, a, a motion to uh, a motion to accept the second reading of policy DIFBA, fiscal management. Second. Motion with a second. Okay, discussion on this one. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Uh, next one is policy DJ, also fiscal management expenditure of funds. I'm sorry about that, that's the second time on this. Um, so this is a motion to approve the second reading of policy DJ, fiscal management expenditure of funds. Second. Discussion on this one? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? And the next one is uh, what we were just talking about. This is policy DJE, also fiscal manager of purchasing. So this is a motion to approve for second reading 
policy for TJE, fiscal management, purchasing. Second. Okay, and so this is one that I had, I voted no on just because it looks like they we added in to oversee, and so I'm fine with that. Anything else have issues with it? No. no. Okay, and a motion. Second, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Uh, the next one down is uh, policy DJ ED fiscal management procurement uh, requirements. And this is a motion to approve the second reading for policy DJ ED fiscal management procurement requirements. Second? Any discussion on this one? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Uh, next one down is policy G B E B D. This is like an eye test. <laughs> um, right. Did you say G B E B D? Yes. B D. Yeah. 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 That's exactly what I want to make sure my new glasses have oh. right now. Uh, online funding and solicitations, crowdfunding. So this is a motion to approve approve the second reading for policy G B E B. D, online funding and solicitations, solicitations, crowdfunding. Second? Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? Next one to show you. Give this. Uh, next policy is EFC, Universal Free School Meals. So this is a uh, motion to approve the second reading for policy EFC, Universal Free School Meals. Second? Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? So the next one is a uh, replacement policy. This is policy EFD, School Nutrition Program uh, Charge Policy. And this is replacing EC. Uh, so this is a motion to approve, approve uh, for second reading policy EFD, School Nutrition Program Charge Policy. Second? Go to A and A on YouTube. And to replace, sorry, and, and to replace, replace EEC. Okay, second? Motion and second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? That's all? Yep. Thank you very much. Moving on, we have minutes. <coughs> I don't know if that leave us any more than that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I move to approve the open session minutes of the school committee meeting on April 8, 2004, as written. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. The only discussion I have, um, I think Jen Leander's name is not Leander's, it's L E D N D E R S. I was going to say, there are signs around town. <laughs> <laughs> but they're worth it. <laughs> but just to, uh, yeah, just to correct the spelling. So, uh, okay, just with the correct the correction. Spelling, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? No abstentions, so passes 4-0. Four, four I move to approve the exec executive session for minutes of this group meeting on April 8th, 2024. Second? A motion, a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Abstentions? Okay, passes 4-0. I move to approve the budget for the shop minutes of the school committee on April 19th, 2024. Second. Motion with a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Passes 4 0. Who missed that? What? Diane's not there. Okay. Budget update, Mr. Connell? Yes, thank you. Um, so the April budget report <laughs> is in your packet this evening, um, not a lot of new information or drivers from the uh, March report. Um, we're obviously into the fourth quarter of the fiscal year, so we're starting to get into kind of close out mode and um, review all open conferences and see what's um, available. Um, as is typical each year, we've had some unanticipated expenses. Certainly there's been some additional special education costs that have arisen that we've been able to address uh, mostly because we took some measures at the end of the previous fiscal year as we've all reviewed to pre-pay tuitions to give some additional flexibility. 
Um, we've had some additional maintenance um, from building expenses rise. Address those. Most of these unexpected um, costs, we still need to keep everything in the budget. Um, and I think we're in good financial standing as we enter the final quarter of the public fiscal year. Um, the food service program continues to perform well, and we, did, we see some really good participation in that program as new revenue, so we'll be able to continue to review that account and be able to take measures to increase some offsets that we just discussed the budget um, and we're in kind of good standing. Questions? Questions? My, my only question would be on food service. If, if the state continues to fund the free meals and we're able to get the guaranteed payout that we're, we're promised in that contract, I know we put money into the development fund and to be used for various things. I just think we should maybe talk in the future about how large we want that account to get. Because unless we plan on doing big projects like buying big physical <coughs> things for the kitchen or stuff like that, I think we should think about trying to pay back within a year, within a year or so, like some of the internal costs that we can use it for to be free of cash to repay. Um, special education expenses. Mm -hmm. If we need to, I just do I just worry about having that account get so get large because it's a large amount of money we could be getting and unless there's a specific thing that we're saving to use that money for. If there are other things we can we have, I just don't want it to be an account that we really can't only use certain things on and we don't do it with yeah. the money, so. it's an account that's highly audited. It's being audited currently or not. Uh, we are over <coughs> So we the threshold you're, you're supposed to be at in terms of the, the, the amount that they want to allow to have you, the, the surplus balance in that account. Right. They're We're over that right now. We are over that. Right. There is some immediate capital needs of, of the program that we're trying to address. We're working with the principals to, to look at some equipment that needs to be replaced and tables that need to be replaced. Um, there is walk-in freezes, refrigerated equipment that need to have some pretty large repairs at the elementary school, actually in this building in particular, um, that we're going to be addressing, which would bring some of that down. Um, we are looking to perhaps increase some of the hours on the staff um, because we'll be able to labor analysis that we do monthly um, because revenue up, sales per sold is up, I think there's a need to use um, increase the hours to address that and add some, some you know, substitute coverages that sort of like are similar to our, our permanent building subs that are coming and kind of flow where it's needed. We're looking to do a similar model at the food service. Um, so I think we'll address those, but I think we will certainly um, have an event if everything continues as is in the current structure with free universal free mails. Um, we'll have, we should have the revenue to do those other measures. Okay, I just want to make sure that when, when we can, if there's direct or indirect costs that we can do either before the balance is too much. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Any other comments, questions? Mr. Connelly? Uh, staffing? Mr. Daly? We have a quick staffing update. Uh,
on the, on the second one? Or is there, should the amounts be the same? Are we accepting 106,000 twice, or is it? Um, the memo has the same dollar amount for each of the two. There's one for Benevento. Uh, it's one. It's one gift. It's one. From, from Cavalry and Benevento. I think Benevento was separate. Like yeah, six thousand eight hundred and something. Okay, that's the. So that's that value is. Cavalry was one hundred and six. Yeah. You have the dollar amount that many times. Do it next time. I, I thought it was included in the same. I think it's broken out somewhere on there. Yeah, I might have to do a little more. It's like six thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. 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 We'll, we'll hold off. Okay, that. so we'll, we'll, we'll do this one later. Let's hold off. But the first one was correct. It was yeah. six or seven. I think they maybe when they presented this, they didn't change the number in the second. Yeah. Well, let me. As long as we're on the topic, yeah. let's at least give recognition that you know, fantastic. It's yeah. No less appreciated. We'll get it right. But yep. For the, the people of Benevento, thank you. And it sounds not, not just the dollar amount, but the response time. Absolutely. Just, just everything about it. Yep. 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 For both for both organizations. Exactly. Wonderful. Um, okay, we also have the grant. That was really yeah. talk about it. We did receive um, sort of unofficial word that we received the diversification grant that uh, I applied for with Mr. Clooney. Um, this is sort of year two of the grant that we received last year. Um, we're able to use this for many different aspects of diversification, and it's 91,000 um, and change. I just I it was it, was, it, was, it, was, is it has to be received it where we should accept, vote to accept it, or is this just more notification? So we can vote to accept that. I just don't have the official award letter to share with you yet, okay. but we have officially received it. Uh, 91,286. Uh, dollars for teacher diversification. As I alluded to earlier, um, just you know, I, I've uh, part of what we wrote into that was some items that are reimbursable um, as a part of our, our diversification efforts, um, and so we're hopeful that some of that can be restored to the budget for some for this year, some for next year. This is a grant that goes through September, so we'll be able to do some FY25 with it as well. So this was great news to get over the break, um, and it may. Maybe able to help us in a small way, but um, uh, some of the money is, is, yep. is earmarked for other pieces that include some incentives to hire um, and retain staff. So, and, and who, who was the grant from? This is from the Department of Education. So, I'll move that the committee vote to accept uh, a grant from the Department of Special uh, 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 Elementary and Secondary Education of 91,286 for teacher diversification. Second. Motion is second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. My only other comment on this is not a grant, but not.
know, I, I missed the last two meetings. I, I, I'd have to think that's, I mean, it, it's, 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 it's because I, I, my understanding was that, like, because part of the override vote is for capital projects and things like the, the financing on the Chestnut Street Bridge and big capital projects. some big capital projects that even if, if the override does not pass, my understanding was that they're not going to wait and they're not going to try to do a debt exclusion. They're, pro they're probably going to fund it from other funds that would then mean you're not getting the that's correct the CIP the CIPC grants correct okay so so it's so they're working on a list that if an override passes this is what's happening and if it doesn't it's going to be different because some of those capital projects are right on there right okay and then the second one is do we have any individual can you share yet what projects we think might be funded in schools or do you not know that yet uh, no we do there was uh, they released that today. Okay. They have the list today. So, um, it looks like all of the projects are, are in the list to be funded. Uh, but there was a reduction in one. Um, one of the technology pieces got reduced by like half uh, from like 200,000 to 100,000. I recall yeah. the extra thing that I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, there were needs. There were needs. Oh, no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah no, no. Yeah. And what was on our list again? Because that was like October sky. Yeah. Oh, I have to pull them up. They reduced our technology yeah. 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 I think so, uh, as of the last meeting, they did. Okay. Just on uh, so what, what are on there? No, no they need to reduce a couple of things. So, so the info. So we, we have the Hood School Phase 1 of the roof restoration project to get that project started. Um, we did have the technology, instructional equipment, replacement of the Hood School and the high school. Um, we were hoping for 200,000, it's like 100,000, 105,000. Um, I'm not sure what the fuck is for that. Um, the elementary systems upgrade um, is at 60,000. That, that would be the alarm systems. That's just kind of like the panels and the wiring um, systems replacement. Um, the modular feasibility study, to do a feasibility study of the modular um, buildings. And then classroom window replacement of $75,000 at the hood in the little phase two. And then the final one was the Ford F450 utility truck replacement. And all of those around there. That, yes. Excellent. Good job. Speaking of Michael, I'm telling you that helps us. Missing the last two I'm minutes. Saying, yeah. I'm just kidding. I know. Right. One question that, came, that popped in my head this morning about the override and the projects that they're uh, that the town side is including the debt service of in the override. When we talk about each year, how much of the levy increase are we going to be using up? I don't know if we've talked about those projects. Are like all of those projects going to be bonded in year one, and therefore it's going to impact people's taxes in year one, or is it going to be spread out? This is this is a question we don't may not know the answer to. We don't know the answer to, but it's a clarification that we want to make sure we have um, as we talk about. We anticipate in one year it'll be this, and in the next two years it'll be that. But it's bonded in year one with pay for the, over the multiple years. Right, right, right. But I'm saying that it's the debt service that we're including. If they don't, if they don't bond it until year three, then it's not impacting your taxes until year three. That's, so that's yeah. that's that's the, that's the yeah. Actually, we have, we have we have to figure out that number for year one too. Like you know, overall, like that's what we could yeah, basically, right. Basically, right. basically, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So it could, it could be. We, we know what our number is. Right. Right. We know what our number is. The town is probably pretty close to knowing what their number is, but then there's the capital. Right. So it could be a lesser amount for year one anyway. It's, it's a... Okay. Um, good work, Jeff, Michael, uh, and CNBC. And then subcommittee schedule, finance planning team. We're meeting again on May 3rd. At 8 15 a.m. Are we not meeting for it? No, we, I don't know. We no, I didn't have it in my calendar. It seems like there's more zone. Yeah, I don't know if we're meeting for it or not. I think I have it on my calendar. 
but I didn't put everything in. We'll have to see. The Athletic Subcommittee is meeting May 21st at noon. The Fine Arts Subcommittee is meeting May 21st at 3.15. Administrative report, correspondence. Uh, before we do future business, I will just take two minutes to thank Mrs. Dotwell and Mr. McGowan both. Um, you know, I hope this is not Mr. McGowan's last meeting, and if it is, we will bring you back, but you're up for re-election, so I will not say too much about you, but I will say good luck on at the election, and I hope you're sitting next to me for the next one, and if not, we will call you back and thank you properly. But I will say for uh, Diane Bobwell, I know it's been a very rough six years for the schools. I mean, I think you probably came out right about the time that Mr. Bernard had retiring. We had to try to find a superintendent, and I guess we sort of did. Um, and, you know, I think you've been a, a quiet voice, but a very important voice on the committee for the many years. I remember having a lot of discussions through COVID about, you know, the meeting personally about you know, where to go. And I think, you know, we have, a, we have an interesting town in North Carolina because we have different viewpoints. And I think your viewpoint has been very important throughout. And sometimes it's not like getting this thing passed, but it might be making this thing a little bit better and a little more acceptable to everybody. And you know, I value your, your comments, I value your leadership, I value your friendship, and I'm sad that you will not be here sitting next to me you know, the next meeting, but I very much appreciate your time. And I know it's a, it's a huge commitment to serve, and I very much appreciate all the time and this. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you just an echo that. I, I think Certainly with the curriculum, we've talked a lot, we've helped guide a lot of decisions. Um, but I, I do think back to COVID, standing in my driveway, having an hour-long conversation with you about masks, about children, you know, the two of us talking about our own children experiences. And I, I do get a lot of feedback, and I did at the time, and I just continue to get feedback about things we did during that difficult time that made it the best possible to do for kids. And we did we made decisions that a lot of times didn't and we went in some different directions in a lot of ways. And a huge part of that was all of you, but, but Diana in a large way helped to guide us through that. And it, that's something that we don't understand a lot. Um, it, it, it comes out. Um, and, and so I, I really want to personally thank you for all you've done to help guide this district for the last six, six years. So thank you so much. And I just say since we're uh, sort of siblings for six years uh, coming together, uh, you were, we had you, you had two very different campaigns, uh, volunteering after no one stepped up in the second position to do a writing campaign, uh, did the writing campaign the right way, um, you know, made yourself available to the public, uh, and then the, the election three years ago, which was just... Oh, what you did there. Yeah, you, you didn't do anything, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it, it, there was a lot of a lot of a lot of strife around that, and a lot of it fell on your shoulders that it didn't need to, and, and you kept you kept going. And uh, I know it's, it's been a tough six years, but um, I really value you as well, and I agree the way you've shaped the decisions we made has been very helpful. I didn't see any of that, so <laughs> yeah, whatever. Good to see you. I really enjoyed working with. No, I, I see you say. all the time. I <laughs> no, I can't. You can't escape me. Yeah, you see each other. Right. Luckily, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I know you guys will continue to make the right decisions for the district, and I hope that the town will as well. So. Yeah, and hopefully, you're a member of the public that reaches out. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not leaving the community. I'm still yeah, you know, here. you know how to find. Still talk myself in the audience. Right? Okay. Yeah. You can reach out with comments, and now, now that you're yeah, not like you know, you're you're the only thing. business. We have our next meeting at May 13th. Um, it's the bad school presentation. So that will be at the bad school. I know where that is. Okay, okay. Um, and May 20th, we have the little school presentation at the little school. June 10th, we have 
a meeting that we're, we go, we have a meeting, we're gonna have a meeting at five o'clock before town meeting, which will be at 6.45. Only concern I have about that at all we have to think about is if we're gonna have any sort of finance planning meeting in advance of town meeting too. I just, we can move that. I'm a little bit worried about that part. Where we might have to be flexible. Yeah, like so. But yeah, so that meeting may have to get, I don't know. And then she says, now, so May 13th does work at the Monday after the election, correct? So we'll do reorganization on, on May 13th. If there's nothing else, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I so move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. And I'm like, I'm really hanging on with that. So, yeah, so. Um, passes four to one. Thank you, everybody.